Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Total War Attila in our Eternal Empire, the Restoration series, where the picks have suddenly pulled 10 incredibly powerful armies out of their asses. Not literally 10, it was more like 4 or 5. That they could have used at any point to resettle Rome 10 or 20 episodes ago, and now they're trying to break my newfound sieges on Italia. And they managed to defeat one of the armies at great cost... I lost about a thousand men, they lost about three thousand, so again it was a true Spartan defeat down to the last man. And now we're going to fight this battle on the battlefield because they're trying to break the siege on Fiorentina, uh, or rather Fiorentia. And <laughs> I'm going to do my damnedest not to let them. So looks like, ooh, we may actually have a hill. If we have a hill, then this battle is going to go very, very differently than the last one. If it's a decent hill. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of elevation, though. The last battle was epic. It was hard fought. It was a battle in the rain. It's fun to watch. Lots and lots of casualties. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a very tiny hill. But it is a hill. It is a hill. So we're going to use it. Let's see. Where can we set up here? to best defend. I'll tell you what, first of all, I want to have you guys in stationary testudo mode. Same with you. Really want to try and take advantage of the terrain here. Right, and now we have one last unit. I am not going to have a stationary Testudo. I'm just going to have them in the center, ready to reinforce. Not quite as tight of a formation as last time. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and put them in stationary Testudo. And then, as before, we're going to have our general with the troops. Our legionary crossbows. This actually is a kind of a crossbow-shaped formation, isn't it? All right. Crossbows up on the hill. So this is good. I like this a lot. We also have some, some woods in front of us. Very unlikely we're going to be able to use those to our advantage, but these woods over here, absolutely. So let's see. Shock cavalry can ride out from here. All right. All those units are hidden. All right. So this, can, this is going to be selection group one. And then this unit of cavalry, I actually am going to have them be over here and create another selection group, selection group two. And we're going to see if they can ride up here into the hills as soon as the battle starts and hide in these trees as opposed to these trees. Start battle. And let's give that order. Go. All right, so there's the enemy army. The enemy cannot be allowed to be Our banners must remain flying. The enemy has reinforcements. I know. Alright, so our horsemen are hidden. Or maybe not for much longer. Damn. Alright, we need to back off. I wonder if they did that on purpose. I wonder if they did that to kind of drive me out of my potential hiding spot. Our general is being attacked. What? Oh, crap! What? No! You're kidding me! There's an into Oh! That's dumb. All right, well, now this, this has changed everything. We had a nice setup. 
that we're going to have to bring our shock cavalry in right now to defend the back of the army because we just got attacked from behind. What a load of crap. Alright, we're going to actually use these cavalry to do as much damage to this army as possible in advance. Alright, so this... That didn't go too, too well for them. Alright, let's pay these skirmisher cavalry a visit with the general's unit. They're trying to bring these... <laughs> they're just trying to casually march past us, which is funny. Hey, you guys need to not be walking. Could you, could you move it? Thank you. Alright. All right, so they, it's very different from the last battle. They came in from different directions. Didn't see it coming at all. I didn't. All right, and I'm just, I'm going to just use these cavalry as bludgeons. This is actually good. This bodes well, all things considered. Because their army is starting the battle split up. It's a very disorganized defense on my part because they caught me off guard. But it bodes very, very well. All right, we're going to lower the morale of those guys. This is actually one of the remnant units from the previous battle. I can tell because they're weakened. Oh yeah, they're done. This entire unit's finished. They can't stand up to a Praetorian cavalry charge. They're done. Fantastic. Alright, pay them a visit. Okay, looks like the rest of the battle lines are arriving to actually fight where we had planned to fight. Once again, the cavalry AI just dicking around. I have to say, you know, that's probably been the one... That's been the single biggest turnoff in this campaign for me, is the cavalry AI just being a dick. Okay, so now we do have a proper battle forming up in the middle here. I knew there was a large force somewhere. Alright, let's see if we can finish off those skirmishers. These Pictish Swordsmen are, are definitely holding their own, I will say that. Right, let's charge these Shock Cavalry in from this direction. Good! Alright, this unit's stationary right now, so they're refusing to move. Lower the morale of that central line there. And we are almost able to bring these cavalry back into the main fight. And if that happens... Oh, hey, artillery. Perfect timing. Your timing could not have been better. That artillery is going to wipe... Yeah, this is going much better than the last battle. Yeah, you guys are done. Wow, these Pictish Swordsmen are holding their own. I've had two cavalry units just tied up and out of the battle. For the longest time. Okay, good. This unit is, is routing. Oh, 
Okay, let's bring the cavalry back in from the fringes, and we should be able to take out these bowmen, which will really, really help. Let's do that now, actually. Finishing the bowmen should help put a nail in the coffin of the entire battle, to be honest. Twenty seconds until we can reduce the morale of these troops on the line again. Alright, so we have removed the archers as a factor, but they are trying to kill my cavalry now, which is potentially bad. So we need to stay on them. These horses are very tired, and there's an entire another army coming in from this direction. Not surprising. Tell you what, I'm actually going to use. Oh, perfect. Let's let's bring these cavalry back. They're they're not doing too well. All right, cavalry, come over there. Let's pause for a moment and re-establish our battle lines. We have a new battle line forming. Q units are still set to be in stationary testudos. Let's fix that. Now, if we reposition for a moment here, we might, might have a chance. Actually, I don't know what I'm saying. I think we have a, a very good chance, this battle. I don't think this remaining contingent has what it takes to, to fight me. The computer doesn't either, when you look at their chances. We've already finished a huge number of them off. I just want to get my cavalry into one group, please. Let's have the front lines test Tutu up again so they can withstand missile damage. And it looks like their cavalry is coming to pay me a visit. Let's return the favor. Alright, so the cavalry are going to be removed shortly as a factor. Also, it was good for them to be able to just stop running for a second. Yeah, they are just pelting me with ranged units at this point. They don't have any foot soldiers. But the cavalry are the biggest threat. So let's treat them as such. Okay, here's what's interesting. If the cavalry continue to run past these skirmishers, that'll break up everything here. So tell you what, let's let's go ahead and get these guys. We can go on the offensive now, believe it or not. Yeah, they're they're turning tail. They're not happy about their chances. And I don't blame them. Oh, they're all running. They're all running. Perfect. The gods. Your victory is moments away. I can wipe them now. Holy crap. This is perfect. I could do tremendous damage to all of these foot soldiers that are now running from me. This is what you get for trying to break our siege, guys. Alright, 
There's 80 Celtic bowmen there that are, that are about to be finished off, followed by another 26 in the Mercenary Celtic Warband. Yeah, these guys are getting flattened. You really shouldn't have run. I'm just going to mow you all down now. All right, I'm going to send a second cavalry unit down here after this unit. There we go. Some of these cavalry units that I'm sending on these chases are not actually that strong anymore. They don't have that many men. Some of these units are going to get away, but not many. <laughs> There's one Celtic Bowman I just sent a massive number of troops after him. Sorry. Alright, let's speed things up. I doubt we're going to reach them before they reach the line, but we're going to try. Oh my god, we might actually get to them. Ah, no, we got to the unit in front of them, though. Not bad. Let's end the battle. Close victory. Okay, so the plus side of what just happened this episode and the last one is the picks have just been dealt a devastating blow. They dealt me a bit of a blow but not nearly what I just did to them. This, though, is kind of why I wanted to have the armies fully prepared before I rushed in. I will say that. Um, I mentioned two episodes ago that I really was was kind of tired of, of biding my time and waiting. Um... Are they going to attack me again? What are we going to do? That's probably the end of the pick's turn. But yeah, I was tired of biding my time and waiting. And so I charged in with all of these armies and started doing all this damage. But I did so knowing that I didn't have all of the possible army slots unlocked. I was trying to capture territory elsewhere on the map before I declared war on the picks. But uh, it is what it is. I'm just going to do my best. All right, the, it's now the Caledonians' turn. They could make a move on me. We'll see how it goes. The Subians could also make a move on me. Okay, duty calls, logistics expert. Oh yeah, we lost a general. All right, so, oh, why can't I select that Praetorian unit? Okay, well, whatever. We killed a lot more enemies in battle than they killed ours. There it is. So we are now supreme. We have access to 14 armies. So it is time to build a ridiculous number of armies. Uh, let's go ahead and research mercenary exploitation, and then all of our possible research options will be done. Because, again, we are not reverting the army to old school. Or we're not reverting technology. Um, we're not removing classic Roman technology. So we still have aqueducts. We still have circuses. We still have the height of Roman culture. We've preserved it and maintained it and restored it. Uh, well, not quite, because we haven't recaptured Rome yet. But we're almost there. Um, let's go ahead and... This army that's attacking Fiorentia, this is a hard-fought victory. And we're going to fight it right now. Alright, so we occupy Fiorentia. This army just needs to come to Ravenna and hang out. Now I also have some other work to do with some of my newly conquered territory. Juvevum? Okay. 
That just needs to be converted. This can be converted. Yeah, food market would be great. Temple precinct would be great. And then I have some downgrading to do here. Cattle pens at Uvebum would also be good. Okay, now we have our fleet that's headed to uh, Caesarea. They're going to come right here. Oh, I think Carthago Nova might have changed hands. I feel like that was a Subian city not too long ago. Okay, now this one needs to be built up. So let's take care of that. Done. We also probably have room to recruit an additional navy. So let's do that. Oh, no, we don't. We have no candidates available. Oh, yes, because we had to replace a general, of course. So... Okay, um, I'm trying to remember how my recruiting was set up. I think I recruit in Constantinople and then set up artillery in Thessalonica, right? So, oh, we actually can't raise an army. Oh, silly me, because we have no, no candidates. Duh, all right, well, crap. Let's take this unit here. Is this unit still fully, hang on. No, they lost, what'd they lose? Lost a couple of cavalry in that battle. That's unfortunate. This general, just going to give him a couple of new abilities there. Now, where else can I attack? Ready for battle. Oh, yes, that's right. I have some additional upgrading to do over here. Let's take care of that. I'm going to put a great theater in Aburzis. And then Flevum. Similar conversions. Trade Wharf is fine. Actually, you know what? Fishing Wharf will be even better. Okay. Alibu is... That province is done regrowing, which is great news. I'm going to need to take a second in just a moment to go through some of the other territory nearby see what else we can do okay need to convert this let's make this a praetorian compound we're going to have a recruiting center down here in Betica just as a means to ensure things stay on the up and up it's going to be lots of food production in Betica as well we have fishing jetties and a great press set up down there Okay, let's go through our territory really quick and see what opportunities we might have. I'm going to try and be somewhat quick, because I've done this plenty at this point. Okay. Anacopia. Oh, yes. Let's go ahead and go for just a pewter caster in Anacopia. Additional income there. Now let's also take just a moment and go through territories that, yeah, see, I can turn, well, I'll leave taxes off there for a bit, still rebuilding. Going through territories that have taxes turned off. Yeah, that definitely is going to stay off. So is that. I don't, oh wait, there's one more. Uh, I'll leave that one off too. That was instrumental in resolving our last food shortage, so I'm not in a rush to deal with that. So, now we have this army here in Uvevum that could definitely come down and reinforce after what just happened. So let me go ahead and hit Verona and get them back. This army is going to sweep down and finish what the other army started. Besieging settlement! We're going to start that siege, and we'll see how it goes next turn. I mean, they can try and attack me again, <laughs> but it, it won't—it will not go well for them at all, because um, their armies in the area have just been destroyed. It's kind of awesome, to tell you the truth. OK, 
Okay, let's bring this army down here and put them in ambush mode. Also looks like we can do some upgrading, so let's take care of that. Why can't I see your movement? There we go. I'm going to put this army in ambush mode as well. Public order is more than good enough. And I'm going to leave this army here in Flevon because that's a coastal city and they could get some funny ideas. So that army is going to stay there as reinforcement. Is there anything else, really? We have we have armies down here that need to make moves, don't we? I could go ahead and take Carthago Nova, which would be a big coup. I think what I'll do is I will attack that in the next episode, and we'll actually, that's that's a battle that we'll fight. Um, not that our last battle for a city called Carthage was all that exciting, um, just on account of Total War Attila's city designs. Um, but we, we've got a little bit of an interesting task ahead of us because we do have one faction here that we're not at war with. So I'm going to try and be a little strategic and not fight everybody at once. Um, and so we're going to focus on weakening the Subians and the, the, and Hispania in this area, uh, while also using our new navies, which are training up right now and will be done in a couple of turns to maintain peace in the Mediterranean. So that's going to be a big focus. And we have more armies to build. Finally, it's just going to take a while to get them fully trained up, but should be done within an episode or so. And uh, we'll continue moving across Europe in our next episode. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the ep if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If you're not subscribed already, I upload new episodes in Eternal Empire, the Restoration every day at noon Eastern Standard Time, which is GMT minus five for those of you not in the States. And as always, if um, if Eternal Empire is over when you're watching this, it'll be something else in kind of a historical or grand strategy type of vibe in the noon slot always. And then the 6 p.m. slot is always dedicated to survival, science fiction, or simulation type content. Just FYI. Again, thanks very much for watching. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next episode.